So there are some more flexible options in JoJo that you should know about, but this is definitely at the advanced end if you want to know about them. Histograms are useful quite often because you can have varying class widths, and so far we haven't been able to do that in uh, Excel or in JoJo, but you can do it in JoJo. You just have to know how JoJo works. And one thing I should explain is that anything you do in JoJo with these little buttons at the top is actually just hiding behind it a, a, a clever bit of code. It looks a little bit more daunting because it's all written. But if I double click on this histogram, you'll see what I mean. Um, this is just a command in JoJo. If I go to the beginning of it, you can see that the way this was told how to do it was it, there's the word histogram and then square brackets and a bunch of inputs and it looks like it's been giving it instructions. And the crucial thing I'm trying to say is that all commands in JoJo can be actually just typed in. If you know how they work, you can do whatever you like, really. Um, so here's one way. Let me delete this histogram and give you a new histogram that we can be a bit more careful with. So if I start typing in the input box at the bottom here, Jojo is helpfully going to guess at what you want to do. If I start typing histogram, uh, it actually s suggests very quickly, oh, here are some commands that you might be trying to type. Um, and you can see there's a whole bunch of options. I'm not going to go through all of these. There's plenty to explore if you want to have a fun time exploring all the Jojo's power. But in particular, there's a useful option. It looks like... Um, two things I wanted to do. Uh, maybe I wanted to have class boundaries being not always uh, equal widths, and it looks like I could enter a list of class boundaries that are not constrained by being equal. It also looks like that this second option here has something to do with density, and that was kind of slightly frustrating about the previous histograms, that it was quite hard to just make a frequency density scale. So this command is looking useful. I'm going to show you how it works. By the way, you can always use up and down arrows to select a suggested command. And when you've got the one you want or the one you want to try, if you press return, it sort of populates that uh, command into your input box, which saves a lot of typing and usually means you've got a command that's going to work. And it's highlighted the first entry in this command, which is a list of class boundaries. Now I'm going to do this completely manually. You could have typed these into a spreadsheet if you wanted to do it more easily. but I know that the data I've just been playing with runs roughly from 0 up to 21-ish, uh, um, and I know it's all bunched up at the beginning, I'm, so I'm going to type in some boundaries of classes. I'm going to do that with some curly braces, um, shift square bracket on those keyboards. This tells Jojo where it, I'm going to type in a list, and my boundaries are going to start with 0. The next class boundary I'm going to choose to be 5, then I'm going to go to 10, because I know that, you know that I want some fine detail in that bit of the data, but after that it all is very uh, sparse, so I'm going to jump all the way up to uh, I don't know, 25, and you can see that if those are the boundaries of my classes, they're not equal width. I'm going to have a width of 5, a width of 5, and then a width of 15. Only three classes though, note there are four bits of information there because uh, I've got two ends to deal with. So that those are my class boundaries. They're going to indicate non-equal class sizes. I now, if I just press tab, it jumps to the next entry in your function for GeoGebra. I want to tell it the list of raw data. That was just in the spreadsheet. I could possibly go and click on it, but it's good to know how to type this in as well. The data is just in the spreadsheet, and I can refer to that in a normal spreadsheet way. So the list is actually A2, and use a colon to say, carry on to A216. That's where my data ends. And obviously, you'd have to go and look at where that ends, or you could find another way just to click on it. But that is my list of raw data. Next, if I press tab, it says use density. Now, um, you have to check with understanding Jodra's sort of protocol here, but this is actually what they call a Boolean input. That's a technical way for saying it's either true or false. I would like it to use frequency density, so I'm going to type in true here. I'll show you what happens if you type false. And then it's asking for a scale factor, and it says it's optional, so I'm actually just going to ignore that. I press tab to get that one selected. I press delete, and I'll just get rid of that comma there. So there is a command, and it's because it's now a complete command, you can see JoJo has already done something on the screen, but let me just press return to lock that in. And it's turned up something here, it's giving me an area, I can zoom in on this, but first of all notice, it's going to get rid of this label, that I have got three classes, and the third class is nice and wide, and it is, if I just use shift and drag to change the scale, it is doing a sort of frequency density sort of thing. Uh, so I think if you multiplied the width by the height, you'd get the number of bits of data in that region. 5 times 36 is 180 odd or so, and that's about right for this uh, data set. You can check this as well, though, because of all sorts of other commands nicely built into GeoGebra. Uh, before I do that, let's have a quick look at the other options. I could have changed this to false. Let's just see what happens. So this is telling it not to use density. And you can see we've gone back to a counting situation, uh, which is why it's on shot up to 180 there. And as you can see it does look different. This is because uh, the class width is different, using density is quite important in this situation. So I think I'm going to change that back to true. I got that menu up just by double-clicking on the object. You get the definition of an object by double-clicking on it. Back to density. 
zoom back in. The other thing I'm going to show you before I end this sort of more advanced video is that you could check the numbers in this. That it's it's clearly sort of worked out a table in the background. You can actually tell it what it's done, or well, you get it to tell, you can tell it to show you what it's done by typing in another command. If I start typing frequency, all sorts of things happen. There's loads of commands to do with frequency. In particular, there are some to do with frequency tables, and that's what I want to show you now because. Basically, I'd just like to see where the data from that histogram has been grouped, and I can do that with a frequency table command. Uh, the one I want there is this list of class boundaries and list of raw data. So the class boundaries are used uh, 0, 5, 10, and then 25, and the raw data was from A2 to A216. And even before I press return, you can see it's put that little table on the screen there. Now, it's done that with a count. Uh, that's because I didn't tell it to use density, but if I go back to this, there is another option involved uh, where you can say true or false for use density, and if I press true there, you can see it's gone to a frequency density, and this is correlating with our graph. You can see a 36.8 is roughly the height of this, 4.6 and 0 0.53. So there are very powerful tools in GeoGebra, but you have to be prepared to have a little tinker with the menu commands down here. Don't be afraid. I mean, you can't do anything too badly wrong just by trying something out. This is a very powerful tool when you get used to it.